Lots of people think playing a lot of games makes you a hardcore gamer. That's not quite it. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 things only hardcore gamers hate. Number 10 is overly hand-holding tutorials. Like, not stuff that explains things that are specific to the game and are necessary in order to enjoy it. I mean, remember, a lot of video games are digital now and don't come with an instruction manual. But like, when a game is saying stuff like, use the stick to move around, when Navi flies in and follows you around like, hey, listen, the directional stick allows you to move in a direction. Just point the stick in that direction and you will move in that direction. It's called the directional stick. Next, we're going to explain what a button is. And you know what? It's not just that. Like, if you have to do hours of tutorials that are just like hanging around some village and doing errands for people, no, no. Short tutorial like that, fine. Two hours of it, and there are more than a couple of games like that. Witcher 2, I'm looking like specifically in your direction. No, keep it short and sweet like Mega Man X. That first level doesn't even feel like a tutorial, but it teaches everything about the game and it's great. Number nine is multiplayer games with obvious glitches or exploits. Just stuff that breaks the game and makes it no longer about competing and being better at the game, but instead just these ruthless win at any cost suck fests, so to speak. Oftentimes the cost happens to be the actual game itself. People just exploit glitches to get across the map real quick or kill opponents and various non-creative ways. And we're not talking like goofy glitches. We're talking about like exploitable glitches. We will talk about goofy glitches later. I mean, it just makes the game less fun, you know? We buy these games to get good at them and, you know, enjoy them for what they're supposed to be. And when people do this, it just really sucks. Number eight, not enough Souls games or games that are Souls-like or even just like not enough games that let you pick hard or extra hard from the start. It just sucks when you get a new game and in order to play it in a manner that you will enjoy it because you are not a novice at that style of game, be it Souls-like or otherwise, to have to beat the game at normal difficulty that just doesn't make any sense. And yet here we are with all of these games that do this. Why? I, I just, I have no reason for it either. Do they just want people not to accidentally be able to play the game on extra hard? Well then make it so that you can change the difficulty level in the middle of the game and don't lock certain stuff to the difficulty level. Just make it so people can play the damn game on hard mode if they want to. Is it that big of a deal? Number seven, the illusion of choice. We've seen a lot of games over the last few years present us with these sort of weird choices that don't actually change the outcome. Like let's say character A and character B are both in trouble, you get to choose who you help, but no matter what character A always dies, that's not really like a choice. It's kind of just a prompt in a story point that's going to go a certain way anyways. You might have a slightly different way to get to that point, but the same character is always going to die. Also, like, let's say you've got the choice of preparing for an event. You can prepare more or prepare less, but the event always goes the same. Like, if you're going to present us with a choice, actually spend the time making two different outcomes and have it affect the rest of the game. Because even when there is a different outcome, but the rest of the game is the same one way or the other, eh. like choose your own adventure books, literally books filled with text that you can't change at all, did a better job with this kind of stuff because it would tell you to turn to a certain page for a certain choice and the story would be different. The events would be different. Things would be different. And people who've played a lot of games and have seen a lot of prompts know the difference nearly immediately. There has to be actual reason to make a choice for a choice to matter. And I think if you're really into games, you probably know exactly what I'm talking about. Number six, regenerating health. And let me preface this one with not every single game with regenerating health. There are definitely games that do this in a manner that isn't annoying. I'm not saying every single regenerating health game is bad. I am saying that it really doesn't make sense in every game. If you put health regen in, say, a tactical FPS or survival horror game, it's just ridiculous. Why would you bother with that? Tactical FPSs, for instance, are in the moment, often about managing things second to second, and survival horror is often about a specific event 
event that you are trying to live through. Just Cause 2 actually did an interesting take on the whole thing, despite it not even having to be a game that had to innovate in that section. Like, let's be honest, Just Cause 2 didn't need an excuse to have regenerating health. But they did it well by letting you only regenerate a certain amount of health, which wasn't very much. But you couldn't just pop in and out of cover all the time, and that's that. You actually had to go get health. But you could also not be shot away from dying at all times, too, by just being careful. Number five, and this one I think is going to be one that we all can rally behind easily. All of the current gen games that are just like a million of the same task over and over again with like a slightly different setup or a spin on the task itself that they use in order to justify the idea that the game has a vast length or a massive amount of content for you to gobble up you hungry consumer you but in reality you're like picking up different items and taking them to somebody else repeatedly over and over and i don't mean like death stranding where they're developing a mechanic around delivery of items from what it looks like i mean like you show up to a guy with an accent and he's like how about you take this item over to these people and you're like okay i could use the 8,000 in-game currency yeah oh thanks so much for doing that man you and me are good friends right that kind of bs if you're gonna try to make a long game like understand there actually has to be a variety of content and content that actually progresses the story is the kind of content that you should be aiming to make even if it's a side story like think about it as world building it's not too difficult to think about it in a manner that would result in better stuff really number four and this is one that we are seeing too much of lately Feeling like you're getting milked for more money after buying a game. I mean, you buy a game for, let's say, $60, and you're thinking about it in terms of getting more skilled at the game, investigating the area of the game, and all of a sudden you start seeing things that affect the in-game character's skill level a lot that cost certain amounts of money. And then the grinding mechanic is way off because they want to incentivize you to buy. No, just screw you, industry. Stop with this. I know that's not going to make them stop, but, like... It's infuriating. Number three, AI companions that shoot at stuff but never actually kill. They're like movie extras that are only shooting blanks, except for you're in a simulation of an event that isn't like that. You're supposed to be in this team of like six badass motherfuckers, but for some reason you're the only one who can aim. Like why even have the team? Why pretend that they're some elite team if they're clearly not? Number two, dumbing down the game mechanics to appeal to casual players. And let me just be very clear, I am not saying that games should turn off casual players. I'm saying that you shouldn't try to make games that just screw up what makes the game good to be more like other games, for instance. People get acquainted with a certain game and duplicating the mechanics of that game becomes more enticing to publishers because they already understand it. There's less to learn. And then they shoehorn that stuff into games that we already like and it's not appreciated because the reason people like this game is because it's not that game. Not necessarily because that game is even bad, but just don't sacrifice the main reason that people like a game to make it more accessible. Because accessibility is important, the more the merrier, but there's a difference between accessibility and like vastly oversimplified versions of the game that seem like every other game. And finally, number one, I told you we talk about the goofy glitches, and that's what we mean here. And not just goofy glitches that change stuff that really isn't exploitable but just overall undermines the experience but unbalanced games as well for instance like one gun being really overpowered either intentionally or unintentionally and people haven't actually tested it in order to know that there's a problem it's usually stuff that they fix in updates but it would be nice if they had like a beta period where they actually took game data down and made adjustments to the game before they said hey this is the final game what do you hate as a hardcore gamer leave us a comment and if you like this video Video, please click like if you're not subscribed now is a great time to do so we upload brand new videos every day of the week and the best way to see them first is of course a subscription as always we thank you very much for watching this video i'm falcon you can follow me on twitter at falcon the hero we'll see you next time right here on game ranks